this video will be watched a million times because the passive voice is taught in it in five simple steps. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to another grammar lesson. You see, I just used two statements in the passive voice in my intro. But to get to know what passive voice is, we need to go through active voice first. In active voice, the subject is the doer of the action. The subject of the sentence is the person or thing that does the action. An active voice has the normal statement order. Like the company designs websites. The company is the subject and it designs websites. It is the doer of the action. Normal statement order is subject verb, like the company designs websites, or subject auxiliary verb, the company doesn't design blocks. With all that in mind, let's see when it is a good idea to use the passive voice. When it doesn't matter who did the action. When the action itself is what we care about. Like a new type of bacteria has been discovered. The discovery of the bacteria is what we're focusing on and it's what matters to us. It doesn't matter who discovered it. Or when the doer of the action is unknown, like in criminal cases, in reporting criminal cases and things that are mysterious, like the windows had been broken. We don't know who had broken them. Or when it is obvious who the doer of the action is, like huge amounts of non-biodegradable litter is left in nature yearly. Who leaves huge amounts of litter which is non-biodegradable in nature? We do, we human beings do, it's obvious. That's when we don't mention the doer of the action in our statement. But then again, if you're a big fan of by somebody, you can do it, you can use it at the end of your statement. I know English learners love doing that. But if you wanted to mention the doer of the action, then why use passive voice anyway? Now it's time to get into action and start changing active voice into passive voice in five very simple steps. Step number one, you find the object of your sentence. The company designs websites. The object is websites because it is what the action of designing happens on. Okay, take that object and put it in the beginning of your passive sentence. So that will be step number two. Use the object in the beginning of the sentence. Okay, our passive sentence has already started. Websites. Now it's time for step three. You find the tense of the sentence. The active sentence was, the company designs websites. This S here tells us that we have a simple present sentence. By the way, if you want lessons on all the tenses in English, my playlist where I taught them all is linked in the description. It's called English Tenses. So you found the tense of the sentence. And step number four is using the correct form of the verb to be in that tense and matching it in number with the object that is now playing the role of the subject. Websites, which is plural. Now, what are the forms of be in the simple present tense? Am, is, and are. Websites are. So, our sentence goes like, websites are. Let's move on to step five, the final step. You find the main verb in the active voice sentence and you use its past participle form after the correct form of be. The original sentence was, the company designs websites and the main verb there is designs. The past participle form of designs is designed. So websites are designed. Voila, you got your passive voice sentence. Now that you know the very simple formula to forming passive sentences from active sentences, or basically forming passive sentences from scratch, let's practice the different forms of be in different tenses. Learning the different forms of be in different tenses will be super useful to you. You just learned about the forms of be in the simple present tense, which are am, is, and are. Now let's move on to the rest of the tenses. Starting with the present continuous tense, which has the formula of am, is, are, verb, ing. 
instead of that verb, we use be. So am being, is being, are being. Those are the forms of be in the present continuous tense. You just match them in number with your subject, which means if the subject is singular, you use am or is based on whoever the subject is. Uh, if it is I, you use am. If it is she, he, it, you use is. And if it is plural, you use are. Criminals are stealing the cars in this area. What was the first step? Do you need to rewind or do you still remember it? Yes, it's finding the object, the cars in this area. That's the object of this sentence. So you take it and you start your passive sentence with it. The cars in this area. Then the second step is finding out about the tense of the sentence. Are stealing, M is R verb ing, present continuous. Then you use the correct form of be in that tense and you match it with the cars in this area. The cars in this area are being, okay, are being. And then you find the main verb, are stealing in the active voice sentence. You use the past participle form of that verb, stolen, still, stole, stolen. So the cars in this area are being stolen. The present perfect tense have has past participle. So instead of this past participle, you use the past participle form of be. So have been, has been. Criminals have stolen the cars in this area. The cars in this area have been stolen. The simple past tense. Criminals stole the cars in this area. The cars in this area were stolen. The correct forms of be in the simple past are was and were. The forms of be in the past continuous tense was being, were being. Let me give you a tip. Whenever you feel lost or you feel like be is not working or is sounding strange, replace it with another verb, a very plain and simple verb like open. In the past continuous tense, we have was opening, were opening. Instead of open, use be. Was being, were being. We're good. The cars in this area were being stolen is the passive form of criminals were stealing the cars in this area. Sometimes to practice it, you need to practice the reverse order, changing passive voice into active voice. And that really helps with improving your English and kind of polishing your grammatical skills and knowledge. The only form of be in the past perfect tense is had been. So it's really simple. Criminals had stolen the cars in this area. The cars in this area had been stolen. And in the future tense, be going to plus base form, like am going to, is going to, are going to, or modal plus base form. Will be, can be, maybe, might be, should be, ought to be, must be, have to be, has to be. If you want to extend your knowledge on modals, or if you just like to know what modals are and what they do, you can watch my previous video, which is linked in the description, and um, it's all about auxiliaries and modals. So criminals will steal more cars in this area. More cars will be stolen in this area. The future perfect tense will have past participle, so will have been. The criminals will have stolen cars in this area. Cars will have been stolen in this area. As you may have noticed, some tenses were missing from my previous slide. That's because B cannot be used in some tenses, and that's when get comes in. That's when you can use get, a correct form of get, in your passive voice sentence. Like the present perfect continuous tense, which has the structure of have been verb ing or has been verb ing. You see, if you use be, it will not make sense and it will be too confusing and if you make a sentence like that people will be like excuse me criminals have been stealing cars in this area the cars have been getting stolen in this area the future continuous tense will be doing something will be getting criminals will be stealing cars in this area cars will be getting stolen in this area the past perfect continuous tense had been doing something, had been getting. Criminals had been stealing cars in this area. 
cars had been getting stolen in this area. The future perfect continuous tense will have been verb ing, will have been getting. Criminals will have been stealing more cars by the end of the year. More cars will have been getting stolen by the end of the year. What do we do when there are two objects in the same statement? What kind of passive sentence do we make then? The answer is very simple. You can make two different passive sentences, each using either object. And it's really on you which object you want to focus on more. For example, Steve told Mary the truth. If you want to focus on the direct object, which is the truth, you will make a passive sentence using the truth as the subject. So the truth was told as simple as that. And if you want to focus on the indirect object, which is Mary here, you can focus on Mary and start the sentence with Mary. Mary was told the truth. Now you may ask yourself, what is a direct object and what is an indirect object? The direct object of a statement is the object on which the action directly happens. Steve told the truth. So telling was the action that directly happened on the truth. Mary was just told the truth. So Mary is the indirect object. But you should have an eye on prepositions because sometimes you'll need them. For instance, I gave the students their papers. So the direct object is their papers because the action of giving happened on the papers. And the students were the receiver of the um, papers and the receiver of the action. So the indirect object is the students. The papers were given to the students. What's this doing there? I have no idea. So I use the preposition to because if I say the papers were given the students, it doesn't make sense. So I need to use the preposition to. And if I want to focus on the students, I'd say the students were given the papers. Some notes about passive voice. You can use get instead of be in all tenses. And I'm going to give you a list of the different forms of be after this slide. But the thing is, be is more common and more formal than get. But in uh, tenses where be cannot be used, get is the only option. You can use by someone at the end of your passive sentence. For example, the website was designed by company X, if you want to mention who, who designed it. Don't use passive voice when the focus is on who or what the doer of the action is. So when it matters who does something or what did an action, then use active voice. Mention the subject, the real subject, the doer of the action, which is also called the agent. And here are the different forms of get in different tenses. I've already mentioned some, but here's an overview of all of them. In the simple present tense, it's get or gets. The present progressive is getting or getting. The present perfect tense have gotten, has gotten, or have got and has got. The simple past tense, got. The past continuous tense, was getting, were getting. The past perfect tense, had gotten or had got. And the future tense, will get, may get, might get, must get, should get, etc. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you master the passive voice in the English grammar. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, please subscribe to my channel to help me grow and produce more lessons for you. If you want free quizzes, click the link in the description that says free quizzes in English. And take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. The huge amounts of non-biodegradable litter is left in nature. Let's see when it is a good idea. Who leaves huge amounts of nature? Nature? Who leaves new amounts of nature in litter? My back hurts so bad. I've been recording for hours. So the subject is not needed. Past forms of be the only 
now. Really? Hold all tenses in English or... Why do people use the elevator when I'm recording videos? Jenny. Um, building up on your grammar, grammar and building